this grain, the very thing the ancient Egyptians depended on, may have killed their firstborn children. At Exeter University in the UK, plant pathologist Sarah Gurr investigates how the staple food can be affected by a silent killer called ergot. Ergot is a fungus that you find growing on the grain of both rye and wheat and other cereal plants. If you look at a grain that's infected, you wouldn't notice that there was a fungus there because it's invisible. It's actually hiding within the grain itself. The fungus found its way into the ancient Egyptians' grain stores and then into their flour, turning the bread of life into an agent of death. First of all, you'd probably feel sick. Your muscles would relax. You would then have extraordinarily odd palpitations of the heart. And if you continued to eat it, it would lead to all sorts of problems. Vomiting, diarrhea, convulsions, hallucinations, blood clots and gangrene. For a population weakened by one plague after another, any one of these would have proved fatal. But why would contaminated bread kill only the firstborn? In Egyptian culture, the firstborn was always the top priority. And traditionally, they were always offered the food first at mealtimes. The firstborn would have been the first to be offered food. They would have been the first to eat. If there wasn't enough food to go around, they might have been the only one to eat. They would have been the first to die. And the firstborn would have died in higher numbers than any other member of the family. It's a tragic irony. The Egyptians' desire to protect their precious firstborn may have sowed the seeds of their death. It may not have killed all the firstborn, but it's like when you tell a fish story and the fish gets bigger and bigger and bigger each time you tell it. One or two or a few people dying of food poisoning as people tell it over and over again through the generations could have become all of the Egyptians lost their firstborn. This wasn't simply telling tall tales. It was a way to make sense of seemingly senseless events, to find order in chaos. One way of coping with something that's completely unusual and completely unexpected is that you create a narrative. And perhaps by telling those stories, you're trying to give yourself a framework of understanding what happened. For many, the key to understanding the inexplicable and unexpected is God. If something terrible has happened and you can't see the immediate cause, then you can imagine this then becomes woven into a story involving a creator or gods 